Hello Steelers, welcome to another Bench Report Hobby Update. Uh, this one is, well, for the Patreons and for channel members, this one has come out a little bit late, simply because I got pretty ill on Thursday night and I was up all night, so I just didn't really get a chance to record it on Friday, which is what I normally do. Uh, and I kind of wanted to get this hobby report out because there isn't going to be one next week, which I'll talk about uh, later because I'm actually off to France for the weekend. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but so I basically wanted to get a uh, hobby report out at least this week, just to really just to keep you up, up uh, informed with what I'm being up to really this week, and and some of that has been uh, a bit of painting here and there. I managed to uh, get back to the uh, Warlord Epic stuff, of course, uh, still working my way through it as well because I've I've gone back to reading GDA two, so I'm kind of building up to uh, to, to making uh, to, to getting a game of that together at some point. I was going to do it down at the club, but uh, because I'm going to be away I'm going to miss out on that but I will at some point actually play a game of it uh, and video it. The first things I painted were the 15th Hussars, these are the British Hussars, one of the light cavalry units. Now so far I've really, uh, well since buying those uh, magnifying glasses I've really enjoyed painting the epic stuff. These for some reason I just didn't enjoy them at all uh, and you can probably see that a little bit. These are, these are not some of my best work I don't think. Uh, they're grand at tabletop distance but uh, I could have probably gone back and done a little bit more detail work on them but you know they are what they are and I'm, I'm, I'm chuffed that I've finished them. I just for some reason I just didn't really enjoy painting them. I'm not sure what it was with them. Maybe it was a lot older lace on, uh, on the pelis and things that they've got on there but they're done they're done and that's the most important thing and I also carried on with more cavalry as well so I went to the French light cavalry and these are the third chasseurs a cheval the uh, horse hunters and these guys are resplendent in their green uniforms I really like the green of the uh, the chasseurs I think it's fantastic it really stands out it's very different obviously the blue uh, of the rest of the French infantry uh, really dashing uh, but these were really lovely these were very nice to paint uh, and again very enjoyable uh, as I say I'm trying to work my way at the moment through most of the horses at this point uh, these guys I painted their horses with contrast paints the citadel ones and with the chasseurs what I did was I painted quite a few different colors of horses because they were just getting their mounts from wherever whereas the British were a little bit more uh, they, they were already a standing army so they'd already sorted out their mounts a little bit more than the French had in 1815. And then completely off the subject there, I turned back to one of the Dutch houses that Paul over at Sabotage sent me ages ago. They've been sitting in a box for a long time. I painted a couple of them and I keep meaning to go back to them. Uh, and this one I just thought, right, I'm going to paint something because I fancy doing something slightly different. I've not done any terrain for a while. And I saw that Steve over at uh, On Point HQ had been doing quite a bit of terrain recently. Most of his was fantasy stuff. It's not really my taste but it kind of just give me the kick up the bum to do a bit more uh, of my scenery as well and dig out some of the stuff. So I'm going to do some more of these Dutch houses at some point in the future and then it means I can play some games set around Arnhem, which is quite fortuitous because it is Arnhem weekend at the moment as I'm recording this. Uh, there won't be any games of that coming out any time soon on the channel, but I'm sure there will be at some point in the future. So that's kind of what I painted at the moment. That was really uh, as much as I got done this week. Uh, I was quite happy with it though, but you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. The other thing as well, speaking of Tab Sabotage and Paul himself, he, I spoke to him, actually I saw this pair uh, over at Roller One, had actually asked Paul if uh, to design and make some Chain of Command dice. So these are the Command dice, uh, and I've got some here. I've got a, a better photograph of them, should be coming up on screen. And I've got these here. Uh, Paul sent me a couple of sets of these, a German set and a Soviet set. Uh, the reason he sent me these is uh, really just to show them off as much as anything else, but also because I'd actually asked for him to design these specific dice here, and these are the leader wound dice for Chain of Command. Now, for some reason, uh, and I've spoken to Dex about this as well, for some reason it's a very simple dice roll, it's very easy. Roll a 1, they're dead. Roll a 2 or a 3, they are knocked out. 4, 5 or a 6, they have a light wound and they lose a command initiative. Now it's very simple, but for some reason in the middle of a game, I can't always keep it in my head. And I think the reason for that is because 
normally when you roll a dice a six is good and a one is bad so for me it feels like the one should really if you're the one that's attacking the leader and killing the leader then the six should be a kill so it, it doesn't feel right but what i think it is it's because it's the person whose leader it is who's been shot should be rolling the dice so for them you know a six is the best worst result they can get whereas a one is the worst worst result that they can get so they get killed so basically i just asked paul if he would design these and he is also selling these they're not on his website so you are going to have to email him and ask him for them the chain of command dice themselves are pretty cool uh, it tells you exactly what's on you know what the dice rolls are so they're very good for people who are only just getting into the game uh, just a real nice aid memoir for people uh, so go and check those out uh, well go and ask paul uh, if you can buy a set of these and he will be very amenable to them so go and check him out and for the arnhem houses as well because he's selling those in 15 mil the other thing as well that came through the post as well were, uh, came from Miska Miniatures, a uh, French company who are doing a th new 3D range of 28mm, but they printed them for me in 15mm, of French uh, Senegalese Tyrelliers. So these are the Senegalese uh, the, the troops who fought with the French. Uh, instead of using the Horizon Blue uniforms that uh, the, the French army, the rest of the French army wore, uh, their colonial troops like the Senegalese and the Moroccans and others, uh, they wore a khaki uniform. So they sent me a bunch of these. I think this is, I don't know if it's a full platoon or if it's a couple of platoons, I'll have to check out. But I said what I'll do is I'll do a quick review video of these at some point down the week. So I'll hopefully get that out for you at some point. But yes, they very kindly sent these through. So uh, go and check out their Kickstarter. I'll put a link to it down in the description down below. So just go and check that out. Uh, I think it's still got about 25 days or so to run. So uh, go and get yourself. If you're interested in some uh, French uh, colonial troops to add some bit of flavor to the uh, First World War tables. So I mentioned it at the start. <clears throat> Next week uh, there won't be a hobby update simply because I'm going to be in France. Uh, I'm going over to Verdun with my mates Mark and David and their new attendee, I think it's Paul, Paul I think he's called, and we're heading down to Verdun via the Somme. So we're going to call in to have a look at some of the archaeological sites that David and I used to work on. Uh, we haven't been back there for ooh, 10 years plus, I think, at this point. So we're going to call into some of the, the sites on the way down and have a look at those, most likely Vimy Ridge and a few other places here and there. Uh, and then we're going to head all the way down to Verdun itself and have a look around the forts. Now, I'm particularly excited about this because I've never been to Verdun before. It's a part of the battlefield that I've never actually uh, explored and never been able to get that far down south and always really wanted to because I know there's lots of uh, the battlefield remains are still there in many places the forts are still there you know they are visitable so we're going to be heading down there for that and i'm absolutely you know i'm stoked about it really looking forward to it and again massive thanks to mark who will be driving down there uh, and it's because it is going to be a long drive uh, it's a long enough drive I mean I've got to get down to Milton Keynes to those guys anyway and then it's going to be quite a, a haul down uh, across the, uh, the the tunnel and then back down into, into France as well but yeah I'm really excited about seeing that part of the, the battlefields of the First World War as I say it's a part I've never actually explored in uh, not even in uh, not even scratch the surface I've literally never been so yes so that's why there won't be an update next week what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my camera Camera. and similar to the trip we took to Waterloo last year I will do a field report on it uh, so expect that at some point in the future it'll probably be along the same lines as the uh, the Waterloo report more about uh, you know how how to visit the sites rather than you know a, a, a cold uh, history of them because there's plenty of histories out there about Verdun so there's not much point in me adding uh, more to that but I will show you some of the sites that you can go and see so I'm looking forward to it hopefully you'll be looking forward to that video as well at some point in the future right i will wrap up there i've got nothing else really to tell you this week it's pretty quiet apart from those bits of painting uh, and little bits in the post uh, so as always uh, check out the warlord affiliate link that's down there uh, it gives me a little bit of a kickback anytime you buy anything through through warlord uh, it helps out the channel of course and please subscribe uh, to the channel if you haven't already 
uh, as always in my analytics, it's, it always points out to me that about 70 to 80 percent of the people that watch these videos aren't actually subscribed. It co literally costs you nothing and you will get these videos in your feed on YouTube as soon as they come up as well. So it's worth doing because it'll cost you notes, you know, and I'm a Yorkshireman so I know the, uh, the cost of everything. <laughs> but also as well if you want to help out the channel please do check out the Patreon because you will get these videos early. Uh, any videos that I make will come, come out ad-free early for Patreons and also ch same with channel members as well. They get the same deal as well and it'll cost you less than pff, a coffee uh, a, a month and uh, it really does help out the channel. It keeps the lights on here at Steel Towers. Right. I will leave it to that. As I say, uh, this is a bit of a whistle stop tour through uh, what I've done this week, but I will leave it to that and I will say you, I will see you in the next Storm of Steel video.